Hello everyone and welcome to another IB Pass paper. This time we're on page 6 and it's the May 2018 Standard Level Paper 1. So question 10, it's a, it's a fixed mass with an ideal gas trapped in a cylinder of constant volume. So we're into, we're into thermal physics. So for this we're going to probably need to think about our, from our data sheet some of the formulas from... Um, unit three, thermal physics. So I'm just going to bring this into play, pop it down here. And uh, let's think about the question. So we have this, we have this gas um, it's trapped in the cylinder, constant volume, and its pressure is, it's, sorry, its temperature is varied. So just imagine, we'll do a little sketch so that we can visualize this. You have a cylinder, inside the cylinder is a gas. Um, so we know that we have a we have a, a volume that's fixed because this cylinder is is closed at both ends. Um, temperature is varied, so the temperature is going to be changed. And so just qualitatively, we should think about what's happening. We're going to increase or decrease the temperature of this cylinder with this ideal gas inside, and the model that we're using to think about gases is the ideal gas um, right here so what's going to happen when you increase the temperature is you're adding energy to these part of these these molecules and that means they're going to have a greater kinetic energy which means they're going to move around more and more and as they do so they're going to collide against the edges of this cylinder they're going to collide against against the edges of the cylinder with number one they're going to have more speed in other words they're going to have more kinetic energy so there's going to be a greater collision force they have greater momentum, so they're going to collide with the edge of the cylinder with individually with greater force. But because they're also moving more quickly, they will also collide more frequently with the edges of the cylinder, the internal edges of the cylinder. So what does that mean? Well, that means that overall, there's going to be an increasing force pushing out on the cylinder. We call that pressure. Okay, so we're going to increase the pressure. And that's essentially what the experiment or the question is asking about the pressure is on the y-axis so this is going to be the responding variable to the manipulated variable so as we increase the temperature we're going to get an increase in the pressure and so right away we we can uh, we can almost eliminate two of these right away just by thinking about this in terms of the kinetic uh, model of matter we're going to eliminate uh probably this one and this one, because both B and D here are showing a, a negative correlation. In other words, as the temperature increases, the pressure decreases. And that doesn't fit with the model that we've been, we've been thinking about. Now we're going to get into a little bit more minutiae here with the two A and C graphs. Um, they both have a linear relationship, which sort of fits with our qualitative description. But one of these tends to go through the uh, origin, so let's just extend this through the origin. This is going to go through the origin to here. Whereas in, in option A, it looks like it goes way back to a negative. There's going to be some kind of negative temperature here in Celsius. Okay, and that's actually really important. So let's get a little quantitative with this, or at least look at some of our formulas. We know we're dealing with an ideal gas, so hopefully, when you're looking at this uh, data sheet here, hopefully one of these equations jumps out at you, and that is, of course, this one here. PVNRT, the ideal gas law, which essentially says, um, let's write it out here, we're going to go PV, so pressure times volume, actually I should have done that as a lowercase, PV, pressure times volume, is equal to n, which is the number of molecules that there are, uh, multiplied by r, which is a constant, and then t is the temperature in Kelvin. And that's really important. The temperature is in Kelvin. We must remember that. Um, that's gonna, hopefully going to be able to distinguish between a and c. So let's just look at the relationship. Hopefully it's really clear to you. Um, if we think about all of the constants, we can cancel them out in this relationship. So the volume is constant, so we don't need to worry about that. The number of molecules or the molar number is, is going to be constant because it's, it's, it's trapped inside the cylinder. 
and then r is the constant value for this. So that means that the pressure is proportional to the temperature as long as we're in Kelvin. Why is it important that we're in Kelvin? Well, that's because if we bring the if we if we think about our ratio of Kelvin to degrees Celsius, um, we can think of zero Kelvin as being equal to negative 273.15 degrees Celsius and zero degrees Celsius being equal to 275.15 Kelvin. And so let's look at these two graphs. Since we have to be in Kelvin, if we have zero pressure, we're going to have zero degrees Kelvin. So zero pressure is going to go all the way back to a negative degrees Celsius. And what if, what if I was to put a negative 273.15 degrees Celsius there? Do you think that makes sense? It sure does. And that means that A is going to be the correct shape of graph if we are in degrees Kelvin, which we need to be in for this, this formula to be true. So our answer must be, must be A. Okay, so question 11, um, we have a ratio question. Um, IB sure likes to ask ratio questions, and that's okay. This one is a ratio question of specific heat capacity of a, of a, sub, of a, of a metal, copper, divided by or over the specific latent heat of vaporization of copper. So we're dealing with specific heat capacities and latent heat capacities of certain things. So we're going to need some formulas. So let's just bring this guy into play here. I'll put it at the bottom. Um, I can scooch it right the way over because hopefully you can recall these formulas here. Q is MC delta T and Q is ML. And so the top formula here is our specific heat capacity and then our latent heat denoted by, of course, the L. This is our formula for this. So let's take a look at what these what these mean um, and think about these in terms of, well, maybe we don't even need some values, but let's let's just think about it first. So specific heat capacity of copper. So this top one. Let's just think about what that is for a second. Well, it's going to be our Q is MC delta T. And this is our energy. So what we're really looking for is our C value. Okay, the C, this is the specific heat capacity constant for a particular substance, in this case, copper. So we're going to rearrange this formula and solve for C. So that's just Q over M delta T. So that's equal to our C. Okay, let's, so that this, is, this C is our specific heat capacity of copper. So we're going to put that, we can, re, we can just extend this and say C over. Okay, now let's do the same for our latent heat. Let's think about what that means. Well, our formula is Q M L. So clearly what I need here is my latent heat capacity value, which is L. And so I'm just going to rearrange to solve for that. So L is Q over M. And our formula here is going to be just C over L. OK, but we're asked to find the units. So what the heck are these units all about? Well, let's take a, a deeper look um, over in the red side of our thinking, we had Q. And remember from our formulas, Q is an energy. It's a change in energy. So let's put these in as, um, as units. So energy we know is to be in joules. Divided by mass times the change in temperature. Well, in mass, we're going to use, let's just use grams. We could use, actually, let's just use kilograms. It doesn't really matter. Kilograms or grams, both are, both are commonly used in these formulas. So we have kilograms multiplied by the temperature, and that's going to be in Kelvin. Okay, happy. Um, now, when we rewrite this, remember, we're going to be putting that on top. So let's do a division here. We're going to go joules. I'm going to make this like this. Joules, kilograms times Kelvin. Okay. And... That's on top. And then I'm going to go and do my, let's do the units for this guy. So Q, remember, is joules over 
mass in kilograms. So now we're going to put that over the top. So this whole thing is now, once again, joules over kilograms. And what we can see is that the joules are going to cancel, the kilograms are going to cancel, and what you're left with here is uh, something over, so let's just say 1 over, degrees Kelvin, which we can say is the reciprocal, so k to the negative 1. So that means our correct answer is C.